since today. 
dollars we have Kevin Durant three dollars Kawhi Leonard two dollars Giannis which I guess you know he could be in the small forward position but he's definitely more of a true power forward uh, and at the one dollar we have Paul Pierce from the Boston Celtics so again very 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 good pickups five dollars for power forwards we have Tim Duncan Timmy D one of the goats uh, greatest players of all time for sure then we have Dirk Davinsky another player like that Kevin Garnett my god what a player Anthony Davis at two dollars might be a steal and a one dollar prime Lakers Pau Gasol so if you get if you pick up Kobe I think you have to pick up Gasol right that that, that deal was crazy back in the day uh five dollars we have for centers Shaquille O'Neal obviously you gotta pick up Shaq uh big Dwight Howard at four dollars Marc Gasol prime Marc Gasol at three dollars Yao Ming at two dollars and then at one dollar you have the prime Atlanta Hawks Al Horford so there are a lot of very, 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 very interesting names on this list. And definitely, there are, you know, some tips and tricks you could do when doing these, or you can just, you know, pick up the, the, the top tier guys and then just sort of work your way down to sort of the other people you don't really need to care about. But you guys know me, and whenever I do these videos, I always try to find the hidden gem. And I think I do see one right now. And it is a player who is currently still playing in the league at $2. I kind of already gave it away. I'm sorry about that. But at $2, I mean, Anthony Davis already has talent to be an all-time great player. All he needs is the accolades, and boom, he's on the list. Uh, he's already, already arguably one of the, the most talented uh, bigs of all time. If you're going just off of basketball skill, again, just accolades and things like that, he'll rack it up over the years, especially being in L.A., I think for $2, I'm my power forward position. I'm actually going to move him to a position I think he'd play better in, especially in today's NBA. I'm moving 80 to the 5, so I'm at, at my center position. $2, Anthony Davis. Not a bad pickup whatsoever, at least in my opinion. Um, Anthony Davis, at, at any point in time in his career, is just a dominant player. I mean, you can pick 80 from now. 80 on the Pelicans, obviously, being the head there. Uh, even when they were playing with, you know, Drew Holiday and the Blazers, uh, sort of um, playoff series, Anthony Davis looked like an absolute beast, even when he played up against uh, the Warriors in the playoffs when they had that series. They looked really good against them. Obviously, not enough firepower, but hey, Anthony Davis were willing them to sort of try to make it very competitive. No, that nothing against that team or Drew Holiday or anything like that, but definitely when, you know, 80 shines, he shines very bright, so $2 center, Anthony Davis. Okay, now with that being said, uh, I have 80 in the paint. He's going to be a very good paint defender. He's going to be very skillful enough to be, you know, a post scorer, a sort of a facilitator, skillful big, but also can shoot the three. Very, very, very good. I think I do need a go-to scoring threat, and there are a lot of good go-to scoring threats on this list, but if you're asking me, who would I want as my go-to scorer on this list? It's got to be the Black Mamba, baby. It's got to be Kobe Bean. Brian sold for $5. Yes, a big chunk of my sort of uh, total here is going to be off Kobe Bryant. So I got 80 at my center, and I got Kobe at my two-guard position, his true position, the shooting guard. Kobe Bryant, my God. Um, I, I guess it's from the century. I guess it's from any time period I really want. Yeah, I guess just a prime Kobe Bryant, honestly. Like, prime Kobe is just a crazy player, but also a very good defender. A lot of people forget about that. He would study film like it was, it was, it was part of his job, which obviously it is, but he did it probably more than anyone else that I probably can even think of. Maybe besides, obviously, like Michael Jordan or even LeBron. I know studies it a lot, too, but Kobe Bryant is just a, a mastermind of the game. So definitely having this sort of cold-blooded sort of maybe even like a team leader uh, to sort of lock in the team. I think Kobe will be a perfect player for that, especially for a team that has all these great players. I'm thinking this more like very realistically. I, I always do that when I do this sort of uh, $15 team. So I don't say like, oh, this player's the best and this player's the best and this player's the best. I think of like, okay, realistically, how yeah, well will this team mesh? And I think obviously having a alpha like Kobe Bryant will be very good for this team. So I'm picking up $5 for Kobe Bryant. Um, yeah, there's nothing really more I can say. Uh, we all already know Kobe. And I think even him with the pairing of Anthony Davis will be really nice. Uh, AD will keep it, can get all the rebounds if Kobe ever misses. Obviously, if Kobe, you know, scoring 81 points in a game, Kobe being a very good three-point shooter, definitely later on in his career, but also being, God, a mid-range dagger of a player that man will just drop bombs from mid-range, post fadeaways, things like that, can eat the rim whenever he wants to. Um, a very great player, very good defender. Kobe Bryant, we already know him, so $5, Kobe. So 
ones on this list and you know I could even you know should have went you know I could have gone Chris Paul Chris Paul would have been would have been a really good pickup but kind of undersized for a, a point guard at least for my taste I like my guard to be bigger ish I like a lot of switchability I mean you guys see it all the time with how I talk about Damon CJ I feel like that's a little bit too much of an undersized sort of duo uh, I don't really like undersized guards I think Donovan Mitchell is sort of like the outcast of that because Donovan Mitchell is like six foot one but he plays like he's like six foot six like he's a total beast of a defender and then I, you guys also know I'm a big fan of Jason uh not Jason Tatum Jalen Brown who I think is like in my opinion in my eyes he's like the perfect cookie cutter shooting guard that I would want on my team like six foot six can play uh the shooting guard small forward position amazing defender really gifted score now god it's so crazy to me that a year two years three years ago this guy you know looked like he could barely make a basket uh consistently now he's you know sometimes their go-to score when Jason Tatum was not feeling it so um I think definitely having a bigger guard will help this team out a lot but not a guard that's going to sort of you know take away anything from Kobe LeBron who are sort of like our main go-to guys and you have 80 in the paint so for one dollar obviously you guys can probably see where I'm going with this it's not going to be Allen Iverson because Allen Iverson is another sort of a score guy not saying he can't be a facilitator obviously he's a great player but I'm actually going to go with maybe an outcast but a very smart player and I think having a sort of coach on the court per se having Jason Kidd as our starting point guard might not be a bad idea so at point guard I'm having prime Jason Kidd as our starting point guard uh, I'm actually going to look up some stats here for sort of like prime Jason Kidd here. Uh, if you didn't know, Jason Kidd stands at six foot four, so a very switchable guard. Not going to be scared to be able to switch off against shooting guards, maybe even some small forwards as well. Uh, he's in the Hall of Fame, obviously, 10 time All Star. His career average, his entire career average for assist is almost nine, nine assists per game. My God, that is intense. Uh, let's see, the most assists he has ever averaged in a season was. 10.8, 10.8 assist. He's averaged double digits in assist one, two, three, four times in his entire career. He's averaged over double digits in assist. Also, key thing, he's averaged almost two steals his entire career. I think it's at 1.9. 1.9 uh, steals per game his entire career. Super duper, super duper, super nice to see. He's also a very gifted rebound. One year, he almost averaged a 10 rebounds. He averaged eight rebounds a game one year. Um, scoring is what we really don't really need him to be. Obviously, we all know Jason Kidd later on in his career sort of became a prolific scorer from the from the outside, being a good three-point shooter for Dallas and teams like that. But uh, even if prime Jason Kidd, we had him, I think it wouldn't really be that sort of, I think he, we would need him to be. Obviously, I would like him to be a three-point shooter, but because um, obviously we have Kobe, good three-point shooter. And then other than that, I mean, obviously prime LeBron back in the day, five-ish, six-ish years ago. Definitely wasn't a three-point shooter. LeBron nowadays is. Obviously, we saw the sort of LeBron turnaround three-point shot that he did. That's crazy, but uh, I would probably want a little a little bit younger LeBron on my team, so a little bit less three-point shooting. We have AD, who's probably the next best three-point shooter on our team, so if we can get Jason Kidd with maybe a little bit of a better three-point shooter, that'll be good. So, I think that's my team. I think that's my squad. I have uh, Jason Kidd at my point guard position leading the sort of coach on the court sort of thing being a smart willing player obviously one of the best passers floor generals a uh, very good defender uh then we have kobe at the two being our go-to man our sort of alpha on the team uh can sort of keep our our heads on our shoulders being sort of coach his core down in the clutch uh just an absolute dog of a player man I, I love kobe he's one of my he's my first favorite player ever uh, also with lebron at the three sort of maybe prime ball handler of the team the guy can really facilitate the, the ball very well but also get his own basket whenever he wants to obviously we know LeBron back in the day was just he can get the loop anytime he wants to also with that we have a Giannis under the good ball at the four who's a player nowadays is that player a player who can just get to the rim anytime he wants to it seems like this dude can dunk from the, the foul line that the three-point line sometimes so uh, we have Giannis at the four with a very good sort of defense from the inside to the outside being able to guard you know basically one through five and then we have 80 at the five who is you know big enough to sort of uh uh you know to hang around with the centers but also can guard you know bigger ish players at 
a small forward, power forward, shooting guards, and things like that. He can move his feet really well, very fast, but also good gets scored from the post. Uh, a mid-range shooter, a stretch big, a sort of next very good score for the team. So I think if my money is right and calculations right, we should be good. So we have $1 Jason Kidd, $5 Kobe, that's 6 We have $5 LeBron, that's 11 We have $2 Giannis, which is 13 